All right, all right. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, my name is Murray Allen, certified credit consultant, proud member of the Powerful Pioneer Organization. And brother, thank you once again for this incredible platform. MC Credit Empowerment uh, is an organization that's been helping a lot of people in terms of their credit uh, education and credit restoration, and we provide compensation as well. So let's move on to the next slide. All right, once again, I'm CEO and founder of MC Financial Services and MC uh, Credit Empowerment. I'm a certified credit consultant since 2010. I'm also an author of a book that is called Harlem Deserves Duck Credit. I have been presenting uh, business and personal credit since uh, 2009. I'm also in partnership with a company that actually provides the credit restoration services. That company is called the National Credit Education Service Company. Once again, I've provided credit restorations to hundreds of thousands of people actually, whether it's personal, uh, business, uh, and other, other type of financial services. Now, mission statement is to empower small professionals, business professionals, and consumers by educating them about the importance of credit while providing a solution. These are just a number of uh, organizations I've been working with. Uh, I don't know, I'll just throw out a couple of names. Uh, Union of Settlement, uh, Acacia Garden, which is an organization that uh, helps develop uh, people, uh, affordable housing. I was actually in charge of the directing of uh, educating the community about credit so we can have their credit scores go up through, through knowledge and education and they can be able to position themselves to get affordable housing because there are certain criteria of credit scores that they have to have. So I was involved in that. We also did a bilingual Spanish, English, English, Spanish uh, translation uh, workshop as well on credit. Work with uh, Raymond Flanagan, Flanagan, Douglas Element, which is a real estate company. Uh, all the banks, Wells Fargo, uh, TD Bank, uh, Carver Federal Savings Bank, Operation Hope, Thurgood Marshall Academy, uh, you know, Harlem Chamber of Commerce, uh, Commonwealth Council. This, the list just really goes on and on. Again, it is my passion to empower and educate people about credit, and particularly in the community as well as outside the community. Next slide, please. So a little bit about credit scores for a second. The question is, are credit reports accurate? It's really interesting to know is that accuracy problems affect many, many consumer credit scores. You know, studies have revealed that millions of Americans have significant errors on their credit profiles. Now these errors affect people's credit score anywhere from 50 to 100 points. Now, why is having good credit really good? Well. You know, it's a lot of important factors involved in having good credit. For example, uh, an opportunity to lower uh, interest rates or your maybe your credit card and your mortgage payment, your car notes as well. And you have better loan opportunities as well. Uh, for example, if you're trying to get a loan, you know, at a certain amount of interest rates, again, you can position yourself to do that. And also, if you may want to increase your credit, uh, your credit amount, your credit limit. Uh, by having a good credit score, I can actually position you to be able to do that. To give the background noise, guys, that's, that's my neighbor. They should leave you shortly. Uh, purchase a home, refinancing a car, uh, less down payments on apartments, uh, even job opportunities, as a matter of fact. I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, there are about over 40 states that have a credit check program in place. In other words, the Fair Credit Reporting Act has deemed that it's okay for certain companies to not hire you because of your credit report. <clears throat> they do have the um, priority to be able to do that in their own companies. Um, the way they do that is the fact that if you've ever filled out an application before and on the second page, it's always some things are fine print. But sometimes folks can't read, they sign off on it. In actuality, what you're signing most of the time is something called um, a permissible purpose. Permissible purpose basically states that you, as a potential employee, uh, can allow the credit, excuse me, can allow the company to look at your credit report to determine whether or not they're going to hire you. How about that, huh? My question is always that what does it has to do with your <clears throat> your integrity, your your, your person as a um, God fearing person, a hard working individual? How people can actually judge you on your credit report? I think it's extremely unfair. I can say this emphatically in the state of New York in 2015, 
through the de Blasio administration, they came up with a uh, legislation called the Stop Credit Discrimination Act, which allows you as a, a person who's uh, vying for a uh, job not to be discriminated against because of your credit report. I mean, there are some exceptions to the rule, I'm not gonna get into it right now, but again, there are over 40 states right now nationwide who actually judge you based on that. Now here we have is something extremely significant. You know, I tell you, if there's anything that I, I left here with that I want people to really know about is something called the FICO formula. FICO stands for Fair Isaac Corporation. It's been around since 1956. If you look at this pie chart, this is an indication of how you can be able to determine how your credit score is gonna be uh, gauged through FICO. What they've done is they created it with an algorithm, which basically has to do with this, uh, this, uh, this pie chart right here. For example, if you notice the greatest piece of the pie is 35%. That 35% has to do with what? Your payment history. When people are deletory and paying their bills on time, what happens is it affects their credit score, okay? They wanna know and they wanna make sure that you're making your payments on time, not late. And because once it's late, it can actually affect your credit score anywhere from 50 to 60 points. So that's why 35% of this uh, FICO pie has to do with a payment history. Now the other 30%, it has to do with the amount owed. So what do we mean by amount owed? Well, we want to know the balance. You want to make sure your balance is, is down to at least 30% or less. I'll give you a perfect example. If you have a credit card with $1,000 on it, and you say you want to kind of, uh, you know, you want to utilize about maybe 50% or you max out the card, um, you know, in the lender's eyes, it doesn't look too cool. As far as they're concerned, you're not being responsible. You're not managing your finances effectively. Uh, and, you know, this is something that's really a major, major issue with a lot of people because sometimes people, they have that premium that they pay on a monthly basis. So they're thinking, well, I'm paying my premium uh, uh, amount monthly for my card and uh, it shouldn't have anything to do with my utilization ratio. It absolutely does. Because anytime, again, if you're maxing out your credit card or it's even 50%, uh, lenders can see that on your report. Uh, you, what you wanna do ideally, which is the rule of thumb, is you want to be able to utilize 30% or less of the amount that you have on your card. Okay, so that's the rule of them. The lower the utilization ratio, the higher your credit score goes up. Okay, now, third portion of this uh, FICO formula has to do with the length of credit history. Uh, prime example, if you have a credit card and you've had it for a number of years, let's say maybe seven, eight years, and I, I often used to hear this many times, uh, brother, uh, in conversation, people would say, well, you know what? I didn't want to use my card anymore. I'm not using it. Like, what's the purpose of you having it? I'm going to cut it up. You know, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Understand, 15% of your score based on FICO has to do with the longevity of your card, okay? Uh, one of the things that we uh, do as a credit restoration company is we do not advocate for credit repair companies to delete the trades, because when you delete your trade, you're deleting the history of your credit. So therefore you're hurting your credit score, all right? Now, fourth thing is new credit, which is inquiries. Sometimes we have hard inquiries, we have soft inquiries. Hard inquiries essentially is, uh, for example, uh, if you're buying for a, a mortgage, a car note, a loan, things of that nature, and you're doing it sporadically, you know, like every three months, every four months, you're constantly buying for, for these installment loans in particularly. Uh, once you do that, your credit, you're hitting your credit score by about 20, excuse me, by two points each time that you do that. Again, when you're dealing with the installments, uh, mortgage or a car notes, you don't wanna do it sporadically. Here's the key thing. What you can do is you wanna be able to uh, search for the best deal you possibly can within a ratio of 30 days, okay? Within 30 days, I don't care if you're looking for a car or a mortgage, within 30 days, look for as many deals as you possibly can because what's going to happen is that it's only going to count for two points on your credit score as far as an inquiry, okay? So that's the key thing, guys. Keep that in mind. And last, certainly not least, on the real world, ideally speaking, creditors love to know that you have three revolving credit cards and two installment uh, uh Loans, let's say, for example, for a mortgage and a car note, an auto note, 
auto uh, uh, loan, uh, if you can manage those things effectively, um, that's a key point, is effectively, uh, it's gonna add to your credit score. So you encompass all these three things together and you, you, you just really follow the golden rule, which is the five slices of the pie, which more than likely you're gonna have a good score. However, there is a caveat. I want you to understand that over 312 million people in the nation, 80% of them have derogatory errors, mistakes on the credit report that have not been put on there by you, but by the credit reporting agencies, okay? The credit reporting agencies, which experience Equifax and TransUnion has tons and tons of data going back and forth. Uh, they're outsourcing sourcing the information and their work with other places like uh, Chile, uh, Jamaica, and India. And so they drop the ball. And just imagine you've got yourself a, a 700 and they make it an error on your information and you got minus a 50 point because of that. And now you're down to 650. It's not a good look because why? Because now you're compromising the possibility of having a good interest rate and paying a low interest rate because your credit score has is plummeted. So just bear in mind with that, guys. That's a very important thing to monitor your, your credit, uh, credit report. Okay, next slide. Okay, here's the bottom line. Most creditors and lenders, they want to know if you are credit worthy. There's an old saying by Oscar Wilde. He said, the best way for a person to remember you by them is by loaning them money. That's right. If you, if, if you lend someone money, you best believe you're going to remember when you loan it to them, uh, possibly what time, depending, of course, the amount of money. Uh, you're going to know exactly where your money's at. Okay. So what you want to do in terms of having credit of being credit worthy is you want to position yourself by doing things in a habitual way where you are making your payments on time. Mm -hmm. uh, if in fact, if you are running late, uh, you want as well, you always want to communicate with your lender. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes folks are even embarrassed. Life happens. We know life happens guys. <clears throat> so therefore always go forward, let them know that you have an issue or situation going on right now. And it's better to talk to them than not uh, talk to them and try to figure the thing out yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next slide. There is a prime example of having a uh, low credit score and how uh, having a high credit score can actually make a difference in the type of money that you're spending out of pocket. Here we have an example of a home loan, $300,000, 30-year fix, okay? Let's look at the credit score uh, differences here. You've got a score of 760 to 850. If you're looking at a pretty good interest rate of less than 6%. Uh, this is about seventeen hundred dollars you're going to be paying on a mortgage uh, on a monthly basis, but let's look on the lower level of that scenario: five hundred to five seventy nine. You're talking about maybe about ten and a half cent interest rate. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at almost double the amount of money that you normally would spend on your mortgage. Okay, and let's fast forward uh, thirty years later. You're going to end up using saving uh, three hundred sixty thousand dollars after thirty years or spending out of uh, pocket extra money unnecessarily. Why? Because the credit score is a factor, okay? It's, it's, it's a really a factor. And we had an auto loan uh, situation as well, 25 grand, from auto loan, three years contract. Let's take a look again, 760, 850, look back to you, 6.1%, 763 a month. And on the low end again, 500, 589, 50%, 887, about $4,000 that you're gonna save or you are going to uh, spend out of pocket. And you can take that money and invest it in something else so you can make that money work for you, okay? Next slide. So as, as mentioned before, I, I did write a book called Harm Observed to Credit. One of the things that I spoke about is how uh, credit most often time is a behavior. Okay, I, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't learn about how credit works until I got a little bit older. You know, uh, when I was in college, I, you know, guys out there with t-shirts and pizza and, and credit cards, and it was just like plentiful. You know, you can get a credit card. And, uh, you know, I didn't have no real instructions with it. And I just spent the credit cards up, bought things for people. And then when they called me up to find out why haven't I made the payments, I said, well, look, it's not my fault. So you knew I wasn't working, you know, I was a college student, so, you know, why are you bugging me? 
Unfortunately, that's not the way the world works. Uh, but because I was younger and a little more arrogant, um, I got into the quagmire of bad credit. And so therefore, and now I know what is important. Uh, I would say that 80% of uh, having good credit is credit knowledge. Again, it's a behavior, it's a mindset. Uh, there are different factors involved. And guys, I'm not negating the fact that life happens because it does. Sometimes you may get sick, you may lose your job, especially with this pandemic. There's over 3 million people in the state of New York who are unemployed. And nationwide, we're talking about, uh, about maybe 60 million people. So therefore, life does happen. And so therefore, there are excuses for that. Um, but again, you need to be knowledgeable. <clears throat> you want to do your diligence. You want to understand how credit works. As mentioned before, I teach on credit. I do have online classes on that, whether it's business or personal credit. So at the end of this presentation, I'd like for you to consider taking a class and um, I'll let you know exactly how that works. So we can help empower you. So 80% is credit knowledge. I say that uh, after 80% is credit knowledge, so we, we don't want to be able to do uh, the other 10% have to do with your, your good credit habits. Because once you become knowledgeable, then you know there are certain habits that you're supposed to exude. And once you get those habits going on, then what you do, you're going to take action and make it work for you. And quite frankly, you may want to pay it forward to uh, family and friends so they can be able to possibly improve their credit score and their, uh, their credit lifestyle as well. Next slide, please. Here I am uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, with brother uh, George Cole, CEO and founder of the National Credit Education uh, Service Company. Again, I do credit education. He does restoration. Uh, and he does it in a very unique way, ladies and gentlemen. As I mentioned previously, one thing that uh, the National Credit Education Service Company does not do, we do not subscribe to deleting your trades on your credit report once we try to work with you. What we do is we, um, we uh, take those negative uh, information on your credit report, which, whether it's a 30-day, 60-day, 90-day collections, bankruptcies, and we reverse it to on-time payment, okay? Or paid as agreed, that's right. And again, we don't delete the information, we put on time or pay it as agreed. <clears throat> you delete your trades, you're deleting your history. So therefore, if you delete your history, you're, hitting, you're, hurting, you're hindering your score in a, in a, in a very um, important way, okay? So uh, again, George Cole out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia, is very passionate. He's known down there uh, as the guru of the, I, I in fact, call him the Dalai Lama of credit. This gentleman is amazing with this company. He's in all the news reels down there, Channel 11 News, uh, all the news stations know him, whether television or on air, very well known and very passionate about credit. So that's why I've been working with him for over uh, 12 years. Next slide. So let's just, let's, uh, let's, let's kind of put this together sort of in a nutshell, guys. I'm gonna give you a little recap uh, to kind of help you along the way. Uh, steps to improve your credit score. Again, let's take a look. In the beginning, I talked about the FICO formula. It is extremely important that you learn about the FICO formula. Remember, it is a gauge to be able to position you to improve your credit. Um, everyone is uh, entitled to a free credit report by Fair Credit Reporting Act. Uh, you can get Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion credit report. And here's some good news I'm gonna share with you guys. It just kind of came out the gate about a month ago. Uh, if you go to www annualcreditreport.com. Again, you can get a free credit report from all three credit reporting agencies, but this is what, what they've done, guys. Most recently, the three credit reporting agencies got together and they have decided because of the uh, financial pandemic that we're having, well, as the help, uh, they have decided to allow consumers to look at their credit report three times a week. That's right. You can look at your credit report three times a week and 56 times throughout the year. Uh, by 2021 of April, okay? So take advantage of it, guys, because as I mentioned before, and this, which is the third thing, you must monitor your credit report, okay? Your credit report is like a report card, okay? It gives you an indication of what's going on with your credit report. Uh, there's a lot of identity theft issues that are going on out there and derogatory information uh, unbeknownst to yourself. So the more that you look at your report, the more you can make sure you are on track and you can kind of... Um, make sure that you can rectify whatever situation is going awry. Okay, so it's very important to do this. I want you to take advantage of that if you, if you will. Uh, fourth thing is sending letters. You can actually write letters yourself. You can campaign and defend yourself in terms of the negative information that's on your credit report that you feel is unfair. 
definitely write a letter to credit reporting agencies, let them know that you feel that the information that is on your report is, um, is unwarranted. I must say it can be a daunting task, um, but you can do it. Um, sometimes it's successful, sometimes it's not. I always say, if you can get big brother like the National Credit Cation Service Company who knows the laws, understand, ladies and gentlemen, the Fair Credit Reporting Act has 1,200 laws, and 200 uh, subdivision laws that is for us consumers to be able to uh, utilize, and protect ourselves with the average person does not know that, okay? So I'm just letting you know that you may want a professional to take care of it if, if it doesn't work the way that you want to work it, doing it yourself. Um, you can certainly, number five, you can certainly get yourself a secure credit card. Why is that? Simply because you want to be able to improve your credit score. One of the most important things with credit is uh, most of the times the credit lenders they look at the most recent two years of activity that's been going on in your credit report. As time goes on, uh, four or five years down the line, usually it doesn't weigh as heavily as time goes on. Okay, and let's talk about the statute of limitation. Depending on what state you're in, the state of New York is six years. If you have something on your credit report for six years and uh, it's been on there for quite a while, uh, and on the seventh year, what happens is that, that that information should be taken off your credit report. Okay, so therefore, um, you know, be mindful of that. Track that, if you will. Uh, if you're going into the seventh year and you owe money, provided that you never made a payment on that uh, credit card or on that loan, uh, you don't want it to reactivate itself again. Because if you're going into the sixth year. Okay, and you decide, hey, I got money now, I want to start making my payments, you have just reactivated the statute of limitation. Okay, so if I were you, you don't have to take it from me, and you don't, you can, I'll deny it if you told people that I told you, I would write it out if you have another year or so, and just let that thing uh, just kind of fade away on your credit uh, report. Okay, so that's very essential. So a secure credit card helps you to build and establish credit for yourself. And if it's recent, it looks even more impressive because it shows that you've been, you've been taking action and it's more current and you're working on your credit. And um, when you, uh, if you ever have the opportunity to increase your credit limit, do so as well. It's very important because what happens is that when you increase your credit limit, provided that you didn't, uh, uh, um, you're not constantly maxing out the card, when you increase your credit limit, um, it actually improves your utilization ratio, okay? Because why? Because you have more amount on that card than you had before, okay? Next slide. Just in closing, as mentioned before, I do have uh, training classes online. Um, you can actually stay in the comfort of your own home. I have a link where you can actually take, have a, a PowerPoint presentation, audio and visual presented to you once you review it and learn about business credit or personal credit. You can be able to uh, study it. And then what we will do, just to make sure that you're on top of your game, guys, we'll give you a test, a 30 questionnaire test. Uh, you want to know if it's multiple choice? Well, I'm going to devour that right now, but most of it is. is but the whole purpose is to get you to really learn and understand what you've read and, and, and you just put it on trial by taking a test. And you pass that test, we give you a great uh, certificate of completion. It's really awesome. It states that you have completed the course. Okay. And it gives you an opportunity to actually pay that information forward to family and friends because that's what we need to do, guys. And particularly in the African American community, you know, we have the worst credit score. Yeah, 50%. 50% of us have bad credit. Uh, although we have the greatest buying power, that's what one point, we're, we're teetering over to $1.4 trillion in buying power. Um, my goal, one of my goals is actually to have us uh, have the greatest credit scores. Listen, if we can have the greatest buying power, there's no reason why we can't have the greatest credit score. We just have to have uh, a greater behavior, a greater habit, uh, ways of doing things. And that's what I am here for as a credit crusader. Uh, Harlem deserves the credit, as you see on the right. <clears throat> it was actually featured in the uh, Harlem World Magazine, which was featured also in um, uh, Amsterdam uh, News as well. Uh, it's a great book, very basic, fundamental. You know, it says Harlem deserves the credit, but this book is really relative because basically I'm just talking about maintaining, establishing, building credit. Okay, uh, this book is definitely relevant. Judge this book by, by its cover, guys. An awesome book. Um, take down the information if you can see right now. 
if you want to reach out to me for a free consultation, just because you are on and your brother has uh, really uh, allowed me to talk on this platform today, I offer you a free credit consultation. Just take my number down, 888-317-0702, and so that I can maybe help you along the way in terms of credit knowledge. Next slide, I think there's one more slide left, I believe. That's it. Is that it? Yes. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thought so. Okay. All right. That's me and Holland Commonwealth Council. Uh, it's an organization that uh, basically helps the community uh, uh, build their, their business, uh, entrepreneurs, existing and new coming. Uh, I've worked with them in partnership for over well, a couple of years now. So here I am presenting the entrepreneurs with a business uh, basics credit one-on-one -on -one certificate and uh, just an incredible group of people uh, guys let me tell you this and i'll leave you with this really quick for those who are entrepreneurs or upcoming entrepreneurs or, or mama entrepreneurs um business credit is the greatest funding source that you can possibly have uh, i don't know that and only 10 percent of the business population that knows about uh, business credit but it's the greatest funding source uh, I teach on that. Um, we want to make sure that you have your personal credit in order, in order for you to transition onto business credit. But that's something that can be done effectively. Right? So, with that being said, brother, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'll pass it back over to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, brother Murray. Thank you once again for the time and all the wonderful information um, and giving us information. We're gonna open it up. Uh, for some, uh, we don't want to hold you too long, but I want to open it up uh, for any any questions anybody might have that's on the line right now. Um, family, y'all can unmute yourselves if you have any questions pertaining to uh, Brother Murray's presentation right now. Uh, family. <clears throat> yes, I had a quick question about your um, your webinars for online business credit workshop. I think on your flyer it says um, join our webinar on Thursday. Now, is that every Thursday or just this Thursday? Uh, it's usually uh, every Thursday. Um, I'm not actually having one tomorrow because I'm actually um, going to be doing a special presentation somewhere else. But uh, generally speaking, it is every Thursday. There, there's an optional uh, one where you can do it. Every, I do it every Thursday live, okay? Or as I mentioned before, I do have a link where you can actually be able to have access to a uh, pre-recorded training so that you can do it in the comfort of your own home and your own time zone. Okay, any benefit for um, doing the live webinars? Oh, absolutely. Um, the benefit of doing it live is that you can actually ask me questions and I can answer right, right instantly. <laughs> you know, um, you know, um, it, it's just a little bit more personal when you do it live. Uh, maybe I add a little extra information along the way. Um, but again, I think it's very important to uh, have an opportunity to ask a question that you may have live as opposed to trying to reach out to me, you know, maybe the following day or I'll try to uh, ask me those questions as time goes on that you just have to remember after the presentation. Yeah, I appreciate that. Now, quick question on the uh, business credit. How different is that from um, the personal credit? Say you're a business owner, right? And you're a uh, sole proprietorship. Now, does your credit affect the business or is that a separate entity and so the credit rating is built differently. Brother, that's, a, that's an excellent question. And who am I speaking with? Uh, Ron. Ron, pleasure yeah. to meet you. That's a very good question. Um, you know, first, let me say this. Um, if, in fact, you are a sole proprietor, I think it's wonderful. Congratulations. I think you're in you know, a free enterprise system and definitely uh, can work for all of us. But I just want you to uh, consider going into uh, an LLC or, you know, a corporation because I know, I think you know this already, I'm not trying to preach to the choir. 
as a sole proprietor, a lot of it, uh, uh, a lot of the um, responsibility lies on you in terms of if you're, if you're, uh, you owe a personal guaranteed loan, or if uh, you know your business folds, um, or if you owe, um, you know they come to you. They come to your personal credit, and they come to you personally. So I would say at some point you may want to transition. Um, yeah, business credit and personal credit are sort of night and day. But the first thing that I must tell you this is that you must have your personal credit in order first. Okay, why? Simply because when you get into the land of business credit, now I've not, I don't know if you've ever heard of Dun and Bradstreet before. Dun and Bradstreet is a business credit agency. You know, like how we have uh, personal credit reporting agencies, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Well, Dun and Bradstreet is a business credit reporting agency and it's been around for over 150 years. Okay, and so they have a whole different system going on. For example, they have a different scoring system, just like FICO has 300 to 850, if 850 being the, the, the biggest uh, uh, credit score that you can have. Dun & Bradstreet has a, a, a business credit scoring system which just goes from one to 100. Now, 90 is considered making a payment way before the terms and the due date. You have to deal with a, something called a net 30 where you're able to get credit through different organizations or companies like Uline, Quill, uh, they give you 30 days to pay them back. But the sooner you pay them back, the higher your score goes. So if you have 30 days to pay back Quill and you pay them back, let's say in five days, that's a good, they give you a good score, like about a 90. If you pay them back, let's say after 45 days or 50 days and you're late, it hurts your business credit score. So it's just, it's a different type of um, system because you're dealing on a business perspective. The purpose of business credit is to be able to have greater opportunity to have more loan, more lending capability, but you have to do it through their system where you have to make sure that you pay them back on time. You have to make sure that you have at least five trades, okay? You have to also make sure that you are, uh, your, 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 your line of credit that they lend you is going higher the higher the credit goes, the more lenders, if they look at your DUNS number, which is a sort of like an EIN number, and I know, brother, I may be going over your head a little bit because I got um, yeah, I'm following. Here you go. up in it. And this is the type of thing that I teach. Your DUNS number is like an EIN number, it's an identifier. That's where the lenders are able to take a look and see whether you're credit worthy. You know, as time goes on, they want to make sure that you are have a certain amount of money in your bank account you know, that's who you're dealing with, the amount of credit that you have available to yourself. But some folks may have like a, a credit for about $500, you know, with Quail. Quail is a company that has, is kind of like a subsidiary of Staples. They have the same kind of products, but they allow you as a business professional to have a 30 day, uh, what they call a net 30 day to pay them back. And so if your credit limit is constantly 500 for the next year, they're going to look and say, why, why, why hasn't that increased? Are you afraid to take a risk in getting more credit to build your business? You know, I mean, they look at things like that. So it's a, it's a gauge in which they can do that. So again, um, the most important thing is that before you can really transition onto the land of business credit to get better uh, uh, credit and business um, funding for your business, you have to make sure that your personal credit is in order first. Because they will, that's another thing that they will look at. See. I appreciate it. That was uh, very informative. Thanks. You're welcome, brother. Yes, hello? Yes, go ahead. Hi. Hi, this is Kim. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yes, good night, everyone. Um, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to educate us on such an essential topic. And my question is, uh, do you think the number of credit cards you have help or affect your credit positively or negatively? And um, just a little addition to that question. Another question is also, as a homeowner, uh, would you advise one to borrow against the equity over a loan from a financial institute? <laughs> okay, good questions. Let me see if I can tackle the first one first. Um, you know... <clears throat> question has been brought to me several times, they would say, well, Mr. Allen, um, 
how many credit cards should I have? You know, what's a good amount of credit card I should have? Well, the answer to that question, it really doesn't matter. Um, how many can you handle? How many can you, can you uh, pay back on time? Um, that's the most important thing. You have to be able to make sure that you position yourself when you do get a credit card that you can pay it back on time. Remember, the more credit cards you have, the greater the risk that something may happen where you may have to deal with seven and eight cards. You know, um, so it's, for example, my, my, my son, he just got two cards. That's what's good. That's all you need right now. You know, you don't need a whole bunch of cards to increase your credit score because even if you have one card, okay, even if you have one card and remember that rule of thumb, 30% or less utilization, and you work that card, you're going to have a good credit score. So you don't have to have a lot of, a lot of cards to, to, to have a good score. The reason why people get a lot of cards sometimes is because uh, they need them or they want to increase their score faster, for some reason or the other. But at the end of the day, I don't care if you have one card or have several cards, the most important thing is that you make the on-time payment, you make sure that you're using okay. the your ratio is 30% or less, and everything else should be fine. Oh, okay. Any other questions? I know the, as far as the mortgage. Yes. Yeah. I don't and as know, far yeah, I don't know too much in that realm, honestly, in the real estate genre, because uh, mm -hmm. they do take equity, you know, as opposed to taking a loan. I, I, I really couldn't tell you, honestly, I would say for me, I think equity is pretty cool because this way, you know, you can be able to um, probably work that a little bit more effectively. But it's a choice. It's really an optional choice, if you will. Um, I think that... Um, Whatever is best for you, whatever will work for you better. If you want to increase your credit score, you, you know, remember when you're dealing with credit, most of the times, especially with FICO, FICO essentially you're dealing with revolving credit. The majority of times right. you're dealing with credit cards or, or retail cards. Uh, only 10% of uh, credit score has to do with installments based on the FICO scoring system. So, um, you know, that, that, that's as much as I can tell you on that. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Harry? Uh, Brother Murray, you, you mentioned looking to increase your credit limit. I think you can ask for a, a, a raise like every six months or something. Yeah, the, um, the credit limit... Let me tell you why it's, it's pretty cool to increase your credit limit. And sometimes, actually, some companies, credit card company, increase it uh, for you, like, unbeknownst to yourself. Because <laughs> it happened to me one time. I had a credit card, and um, after about a year and a half, they increased my credit limit. I said, oh, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. I mean, they didn't ask me, but I didn't deny it. And so, um, yeah, every six months you can buy for it, provided that you are what? That you are making your payments on time, right? provided your utilization ratio is, is amicable, right? It's gotta look positive. They're not, they're not gonna increase your credit score if, if, if you have late fees and a lot of negative things that are going on on there. But let me explain to you why it's pretty cool to increase your, your, your credit limit. Say for example, let's refer back to the $1,000 credit card, okay? 30% of 1,000 is 300, cool, right? Let's say for example, they increase your credit limit by another $1,000, okay? So you got an extra $1,000 in there. Now, because you have added more money uh, to your credit card, your utilization ratio actually gets lower. Now it's at 15%, all right? Now, because it's 15%, what that means is that your credit score is going to go up, right? So what you want to do when you do get that credit line increase, don't, you really don't want to just max out, oh my God, I got $1,000, man, I got to work with this money and I can do whatever I want to win it. That's where the discipline comes in. That's where they look, is to take a look at your habits, your behavior, determine whether or not you can manage your money effectively. So again, increasing your client of credit, you can do it every six months. You can you can um, check to see if you qualify for it. You can certainly do that. Uh, some instances, as mentioned before, um, credit card companies, they just they actually just give you an increase uh, without even letting you know about it. And most people, they don't deny it, they accept it. Okay. And you mentioned how people can get a, a certificate of completion, you know, through going through your course. Uh, 
what what can they do with that that certificate? Okay, so there are three things you can actually do with it. <clears throat> First of all, um, it's a course that's extremely um, really easy, very 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 educational, extremely advantageous to your personal and, and business. There are three things that help you. First of all, you, when you get that certificate of completion, you have taken a test and you have qualified for the certificate. It's extremely empowering. I just sent out a couple of certificates last week. One was uh, to a college student, one to a business uh, professional. And they were very excited about getting a certificate and, and really build up their, their confidence level to know that they have acquired a level where they know more than the average teller at a bank about credit. Um, they are able to now save a lot of money because they understand how interest rates work. <clears throat> they understand how the FICO formula works. They understand how um, credit is a behavior. And there are a lot of other things about the laws and things of, of that nature. So that's the first thing it does. It really empowers that person. Second thing what it does, it positions you to possibly, now I'm not <clears throat> saying that you're gonna get the world with this certificate, but guess what? If you are vying maybe for another credit card or some kind of financial um, um, uh, need, whether it's maybe a bank or loan or a credit card or other financial things that you need in place, and you've had issues with your credit before, well, guess what? Let them know, hey, look, I took this course, okay? I did good, passed it. I learned a lot more about credit. I am redeeming my ways in credit, okay? Because believing in credit redemption is very important. It shows that you have taken the, the time to really uh, study and learn about credit and you change your lifestyle and your behavior. So that, that's another thing you can bring to the table to them, let them know that you made a difference and made a change. <clears throat> some will accept that, some won't, it doesn't matter, but at least you know that you bring something to them and let them know, here's this, this is what I got. And guess what else? You can even have them call me and I will vouch for you. I'll tell them so many good things about you. You're probably gonna be wondering when I'm actually talking about you, you know, <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I wanna support you in that area. And, and lastly, and I think the most, one of the most important factors is being able to pass this information to our youth, okay? Mm -hmm. Our counterparts are always educating their youth about credit business. This is what we need to do. We need to be able to do that, uh, pass this information to your youth, pass this information maybe to uh, a person who's maybe going to college and doesn't understand the value of credit, pass this information on to a, maybe a friend or family member, you know, a business partner. This information is extremely vital, very important, is insignificant and it is maybe to people that don't know about credit, trust me, it's something that you can pay forward and you can make a difference in people's lives as well. Okay, great, great, great. Um, we don't wanna hold you, we want, you know, we wanna value everybody's time. Lastly, uh, just talk to us about, you know, why you decided to be a part of the Pow Powerful Pioneers and the event the Powerful Pioneers are having this Saturday and, um, I know it's spotlighting authors like yourself. So, you know, if you could just give us a little information about what's going to be happening this Saturday as well. Well, I know there's going to be a lot of exciting things going on. Um, a lot of brothers and sisters, law authors and, and artists and, and educators are going to be there. Uh, I got involved in the Powerful Pioneers through uh, a sister that I've known for many, many years. And I haven't seen her for five years, mm -hmm. but I've known her for many years with Sister PJ. Brown Eye Magazine, inventor extraordinaire, Mama Panua. And uh, I ran into her, man, and she's like, Murray, listen, how you been? Uh, listen, I've got this thing going on in Harlem. It's a gallery. Uh, I, I need to introduce you to this brother. He's putting something together. Now, this is a couple of years ago. I got introduced to this brother. He's, he's, he's putting together an, a, sort of a mastermind um, cultural group that makes up of health and wealth and, 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 and a lot of positive spirituality that's going on within his organization, you gotta meet this brother. So I went, I supported her, I met Brother Rojo, beautiful brother, his heart is his heart of gold, very passionate, and he is the um, organized vegan chef extraordinaire. I met that brother, he gave me the vision. I said, listen, I live in Harlem anyway, this is what I do, it's my, my, my crusade is to really empower the community. And uh, we just kind of aligned uh, really uh, perfectly and I became a power plant pioneer. I think it's been over, I actually think it was about two and a half years, three years right now. And it's just a, a great experience. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be meeting brothers like you and sisters that are on the line inquiring about credit. So it's really a, a God sent. I think it's a God sent. And um, 
Uh, Saturday is going to be an incredible event. Definitely uh, uh, something that I think everyone should consider being there, if not physically, virtually, uh, especially with the Black Live stream that we got going on with Brother, Brother Ali, who is the mastermind uh, behind the all uh, virtual uh, Black Live streaming that he's going to put together for us to share any information we have to share to the masses. Yes, yes. Definitely have to have Brother Ali on. Um, yes, give thanks for Brother Rojo connecting us with uh, Powerful Pioneers for the last couple of weeks and all the work he's doing in the community. Like you said, Alkaline Vegan Chef and uh, creator of Powerful Pioneers. Like you said, bringing like-minded brothers and sisters together. You know, the, the principles and values are very much in line with the AIU movement. And um, any, any, any last words you want to leave the people with before we wrap up tonight? Yeah, just giving thanks, brother, uh, for meeting you and to uh, be a part of your uh, platform. Um, you know, I, I don't believe that anything happens just haphazardly. Uh, I think we are all on a crusade um, to really empower not only ourselves, but our communities. Uh, we have a lot of special talents. We have a lot of things that are going on in our lives that we can come together and galvanize to make a difference, not only in our personal lives, but uh, as a collective. And, you know, like the brother, Marcus Garvey, he's always had a vision of, of, of people coming together you know, through businesses. Just imagine, I mean, we, we're at $1.4 trillion as consumers. Uh, I think it's about $5 billion a year that we spend. No, is it a year? Yeah, probably $5 billion a year that we spend on different things. Just imagine being able to have an organization like ours start to put money into what we do as business professionals. You know, start sharing the uh, product and service that we have available within our organization, so we can start build and, and start develop a um, a platform where we can really just empower ourselves financially. You know, uh, Black Wall Street. Something else that I wrote in my book. I talked about Black Wall Street. One thing about Black Wall Street down in Tus uh, Tuscal, Oklahoma, uh, in the year of 1920. In particular, there were thousands of uh, uh, black business professionals. They had their own airports, they had their own busing system, their, their own banking system, their own hospitals, uh, post office, doctor's office, lawyer's office. You're talking about a uh, 10,000 uh, population of people who are just a perfect example of economic empowerment and masses. Did you know back then that the dollar circulated uh, uh, for two years in that community? Yes, sir. Two years a dollar circulated. Fast forward, based on the NAACP, the dollar circulates in the uh, African American community for only six hours, and then it just leaves. You know, so I think what we have here is something very special, brother. Um, we want to, you know, put our heads together and become a, a really unified front. And, you know, if we can just circulate the money within our community, we will really be able to be a force to be reckoned with. We can build ourselves, support ourselves, and, and just have a better lifestyle for our friends and family members. And most important thing is have a, a very important uh, product and services that, that work, <laughs> you know, that, that actually uh, make a difference in, in what we're doing in our lives and itself. So I thank you so much, brother, for your time. Uh, we really had a good time on this, um, on your show. And uh, again, folks, if you're interested, free credit consultation, uh, reach out to the brother here. I'm sure he can give you the information, more information about me, uh, my email, website, things of that nature. But more importantly, call me, 1-888-317-1702. Yes, thank you, brother, for your time and the, the amazing amount of information you packed into this short session. And uh, for everybody listening, I'll definitely will post the recording tomorrow and we'll post his um, brother Murray's uh, contact info. So you can definitely get in touch with him and reach out with him if you're interested in the, you know, all the services he's offering. Um, and definitely brother, we look forward to hearing from you again in the future. We definitely in alignment. We definitely feel we follow in the footsteps of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. The AIU is following in the footsteps of the UNIA. We definitely believe in um, circulating, 
circulating the wealth within our own communities and building our communities. So yes, brother, we're definitely in alignments and we definitely look forward to putting our heads together and working with you in the future. That's definitely the vision, you know, building another Black Wall Street. So we give thanks for your time, your energy, your knowledge and, you know, sharing, you know, sharing the wisdom with us and just thank you and hopefully we can build again in the future. Absolutely, brother. Thank you so much and giving thanks. God bless you. Thanks again. Bless you. God bless you. Have a blessed night. You are. You too, brother. Yummy. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.